just finding what that is amid all the exaggerations that history and society build around it. St Patrick's life and mission is no exception. I'd like to put to you a modern perspective of this search for the authentic Patrick. Patrick was born into Romano Britain and this is key. Patrick's legend says that he went to Ireland where the barbarians lived and they were considered to be uneducated. Putting this into perspective is important because the picture modern society places on the word barbarian is not the same as in 400 AD. Barbarian in this era meant anyone who was not either Roman or Christian. The legend of Patrick was him converting violent, uneducated heathens. Yet this time in Irish history was of major agricultural growth and creative crafts. But like all other cultures in the time, including the Romans, it was fueled by the use of slaves. Again, a word that invokes a very negative image in modern society. So this is the backdrop to Patrick's era. What is clear from the legends and Patrick's own confessions is that growing up, he took his Christianity for granted. It was not until his time of captivity that he paid much attention to it. This could be us. For most of us, we've grown up in an era of relative peace and prosperity and positive gains in society. However, we have been challenged over the last few years by things like climate change, COVID, and now the conflict and war in the Ukraine. Like Patrick, we must revisit our rich Christian heritage and look afresh at modern society and listen to where God is calling us within this. Patrick's faith was radiant. He wanted to take the message of Christ to those around him in all circumstances and in all places. Patrick prayed, studied the Bible and educated himself on the Christian faith. But most of all, Patrick listened to God. It was said that Patrick would pray up to 100 times a day and wait and listen patiently to God for him to lead and direct his life. Here we see him reflecting St Paul when he encouraged the early Christian church to be constant in prayer. 
Do we do that? Do we spend time with God? Patrick's story is good news. And we as Christians are commissioned to tell the good news of Jesus. In the Great Commission in St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28, we are told to go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. God's mission is our mission. And as the Church of Christ, we are called to partner with him and share the good news with everybody. The tradition of our Catholic faith has always put before us role models on how to model ourselves to Christ, namely the company of saints. What then can we take from the role model of St. Patrick? Certainly not by dyeing our hair green, drinking green Guinness or dressing up as a shamrock. We are called to a new evangelization in our faith community. And here is where we can take inspiration from Patrick. As an aid memoir, I've called this the five C's of Catholicism. The first is confess, to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. To coach, which means to teach and baptize and nurture new believers. To contribute, respond to human need by loving service. To convert, transforming unjust structures of society to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation. And finally, cherish. Strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. There's no order to these as life will put in front of us um, various ones at various times as a challenge and as an opportunity for us to grow. For Patrick and his child experience of abduction and enslavement, he later spoke out against the unjust practice that society practised at that time. Probably one of the first people in history to speak up about slavery. We too are called to convert and transform injustices as we see them in society. He coached people in the knowledge of Jesus by his good works and his words. He not only brought people into the faith, but continued to nurture them in their ongoing relationship with Jesus. As a faith community, this is what we are starting out to do in April, where we will come together to nurture our faith together. By participating in this parish activity, we will be contributing to each other's need in loving service, thereby confessing and cherishing our faith to society. This is what it means when we are called to talk about evangelization. This is why it is important for us to play our part in the world synod for the church. As St. Patrick felt God's call to the barbarian of his day, I would suggest that the barbarian of our day is the godlessness of today's society and the capitalism and greed within it. We are called, therefore, in loving service to call back and nurture the gospel values that Patrick and all the communion of saints did by the example of their lives. To finish off, I'm going to you say the prayer of Saint Claude de la Combière. Jesus, I feel within me a great desire to please you, but at the same time, I feel totally incapable of doing this without your special light and help, which I can expect only from you. Accomplish your will within me, even in spite of me. Thank you.